Hello, it is Cheryl Willis over at Go Arizona Real Estate, and I wanted to bring you the up-to-date, very new news about the greater Phoenix market. We have actually started to see a slight change. Not only here, actually, I'm getting it from all the clients that I have that are selling their homes in other states, and no, it's not just California, that they are noticing a slowdown in their market. I'm talking Washington State, Oregon, Illinois, Minneapolis, Minnesota, I almost called it Minneapolis State, and Florida, et cetera. So everyone is starting to report somewhat of a slowdown. Does that mean a market crash? No. <laughs> but let me tell you what it does mean for the greater Phoenix area. And I have some slides for you because let me tell you, I love getting nerdy and dirty gertie with numbers. I don't even know if that makes sense. All right, let's share my screen and I will show you really quick what we have. So if you take a look at what we've seen over the last um, two months, if you talk to any agent that has held an open house, including myself, we are wondering what's going on. There used to be 200 people here. And if you look right around that March, April timeframe, when we started to notice, at least I felt it in our market, this will tell you exactly what's going on. So a balanced market, and that's what this bottom green line is, a balanced market is right at a 100. Zero is totally buyer-sided, 100 is a balanced market, and 200, this is the index we use, 200 is normally the seller's market. Well, our seller's market got so out of whack, don't we all know that, right? It exceeded, according to this chart, over 550. I am not kidding. Years ago, when we started to see it starting to go towards that seller's market. So if, again, the bottom line here is from 2014. So 2018, we saw a little bit of a disruption in the market. We had interest rates that were going up a little bit. And so 2019 and 2020 really has just come back. But let me tell you, I remember when it was getting to that 200 mark and we were just like, what is going on? This can't last forever. This is out of control. Now imagine, that's what we were saying in 2019. We got up to 550 in February of this year. And don't you know what, if you were a buyer, you felt it. Here, every part of the valley is completely different. Let's take a look at some of the hot spots and different parts all over the valley. Here's Gilbert, probably one of the hottest spots in the country, if you ask me. If you didn't know, they were ranked number two in the safest cities in America. Now, Gilbert, for some reason, and I think I know why, but for some reason has, again, look at their top number. Look at their top number, 750. That's insane. And you know what? The buyer said, I'm out. I'm absolutely out. And the people that were living in homes that were too small and wanted bigger homes or bigger homes and wanted smaller homes, they all bought new builds those new builds are wrapping up right now. I've been closing my new construction since March of this year. So as those people move into their new builds, they are selling their home. So we are seeing buyer frustration and we're seeing inventory starting to creep up. Now, if this continues at the rate that it has in the last month, we will be looking at a balanced market before the end of the year. What does that mean? Well, in this particular case, first signs will be the yeah, price is still going to be seller demand, right? Seller gets to kind of set the price. If the buyer wants the home, they're going to pay the price. But the seller's going to have to be a little bit more flexible on those repairs because they want to close the deal. Instead of having 50 offers, instead of having 20 offers, maybe they had five and they might not have backup offers and they wanna get this deal closed. So they're gonna do the repairs. Then as it starts to slide a little bit more, now we're gonna be talking about price. We're already starting to see some price reductions and we'll show that in another slide in a moment. But before we get to that, sellers are gonna to have to realize you can't ask top dollar and expect to get way over list price. You gotta pick kind of one or the other. So. 
The next thing in line as that pendulum swings a little bit more towards the buyer side is prices are going to become more negotiable. Now, does this mean on all the homes? Absolutely not. Does it mean on all the prices? Absolutely not. It means the nicer home in the sweet spot, which our sweet spot right now is 500 to 700, maybe 500 to 800, absolutely over the top gorgeous homes, they're still going to go like this, right? But if you have, and I hate to use this term, but a home that others might consider less than favorable. How's that? The term is dump your junk. And I'm not saying there's any junk, honestly, out there. I actually show some of the pictures on my Facebook page. Like for instance, would you wanna back up to a major road? Would you wanna have one of the huge power towers right behind you? What about homes that have been investor owned or maybe just homeowner owned and they never got around to any of the work and it needs everything? Those are homes that you want to get on the market now, because let me tell you, as the market starts to soften, it's going to be harder for you to sell because the next thing that comes as that market index comes down, that's this is not the price. Let me rephrase that. These are not prices that are coming down. This is just the game between buyer and seller and how that seller will not have as much hand over the buyers in the next three to six months. It's actually already starting. Let's take a look. Peoria. Peoria, if you see it again in that March time frame, it peaked out over 600. Again, when you're up that high, it's hard to imagine even the, like the market doesn't feel a 50 point change. You don't even feel a hundred point change, perhaps. And if you price your home well, you wouldn't even notice a 200 point change. We've never seen numbers like this. Even Peoria, another hot spot in the greater Phoenix area, has started to see a slight decline. Litchfield Park, I know I have clients coming in from out of state that specifically are wanting to live in Litchfield Park. There's some pretty cool homes out there. And if your guests have ever stayed at the Wigwam, you know why they want to buy in Litchfield Park. We also have Scottsdale. This is really interesting. The last two homes I sold in Scottsdale, we got a list price. And we got the furniture included. Now's a good time to buy. Let me tell you why too. You don't want to wait. Everybody thinks you want to wait to a buyer's market. Why would you want to buy in a market when the values are going down? You don't, right? So now if you're wondering when the top is from a seller perspective, now's the time to sell, okay? The values are going to still go up, but in very small increments as compared to the last year and the last two years. Let's take a look at this screen, this chart real quick. By the way, this is Cromford Market Index. These are all numbers that are extracted from the MLS system. And you can show see from this particular document, the blue is the annual appreciation. Oh my God, I did not say that right. Annual <laughs> appreciation. And the black is the Cromford Market Index number. If you'll notice, the CMI will tell you where the appreciation is going. So all the way up until the beginning of this year, and actually up until May, we have been seeing that market index number go up. But now the market index number is coming down. Again, not values, just appreciation. So from April to April, we saw, if I can remember, 34% appreciation from April to April. In May, it went up to 37%. What we will start to see is those year over year get smaller and smaller and smaller. And chances are we're only going to see like, and I know it's still a lot, 10%, maybe 15% by the time the year ends. And so again, if you are buying, you want to get in now before that slows down. Who wants to buy a house in a declining market? And who wants to buy a home where you're only making three to 5%? The longer you wait, prices will go up. You're going to earn less appreciation. And gosh, I hope interest rates don't go up, right? Now, here's where we're going to start to see some changes. But I want you to see 
how it looks in correlation <laughs> with past years. So we are going to start to see some price reductions. And you'll see that everybody calls me on Yahoo, uh, not Yahoo, oh my gosh, another technology company, Zillow, Redfin. They're like, oh, I saw a price reduction. What's wrong with it? Well, you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. They just were way overpriced. So sellers, get on the market soon, price your home well, make sure it shows well, and you will still stand out in that crowd. For those of you who don't do that, and again, that whole thing, I'll just stick it on the market, everything sells. Now it's going to make a difference. Now you'll start to feel it. And again, if you look at the price reductions, though, they are ticking up, but they're nothing compared to what they were in a year ago, two years ago. So again, in proportion, we're not in any danger right now. We have a healthy, strong, vibrant market. Oh my goodness, do we have massive building? We have companies moving here left and right. I have people coming in from other parts of the country, from Taiwan, from Montreal, from Europe. People want to live in Arizona. It's still affordable. It's beautiful weather most of the time. I will agree, it's a little toasty warm right now, but we will continue to have demand here in the greater Phoenix area. If you haven't bought yet, you're wasting time and you're wasting money. And if you plan on selling, now is the time to sell. Just hopefully you have a home to go to. There's more to choose from now. In fact, you know what? Let me show you one other thing. Um, change, stop my share, come back and say hello. I'm going to go directly to, here it is. This is direct access to the Cromford Market Database. All realtors have access to this, but only a very, very few pay for it. I have no idea why, because I'm telling you, when I talk to people, they're like, oh my gosh, you know so much. This is why. I'm a numbers girl. But this is something I just wanted you guys to see. Casa Grande. I know you guys are probably thinking, what? It is insane down there. You know why? 168% of normal buyer demand and that is adjusted seasonally. They also have a um, inventory shortage, but they have 35% of what they normally would, again, seasonal adjustment. So their market index number right now is 474. So they have a high demand, but because they have a higher supply than most, they're, they're only in the 400s. Let's take a look at my favorite, Chandler. Chandler. Whoa, we are losing buyer interest in Chandler. I haven't looked at this one, believe it or not. Um, buyer demand, you know what that is from? That is because the buyers, and I have 12 closings this month and over half of them are in Chandler. Um, the reason is people that are buying in Chandler are buying in Chandler specifically for a reason. More often than not, either they're coming here for Intel it's already happening, or they're coming to this specific area of the greater Phoenix area because of the school districts and we're not as expensive as Scottsdale. It's that simple. But if you don't have an extra $100,000 to sweeten the pot for that seller, you're not getting in. So there's a lot of buyer frustration in Chandler, but look at the inventory. Ugh. So let me tell you, if you're a seller, now's a fantastic time to buy because you don't want that number to go up. If supply starts to pop up in Chandler, then you're going to have more competition. All right, let's take a look at another one. Let's look at something high end. I don't know, Paradise Valley. Paradise Valley. It's kind of crazy. They're, I think their um, medium price right now is like two to three million. Um, they still have 138% of normal demand. We have had a constant over demand for the over million dollar price point in the greater Phoenix area for we're probably well into 18 months now. It is insane to see these numbers, especially in the summertime. Usually luxury doesn't see anything in the summertime, but we actually have a pretty healthy inventory. I actually have a client coming in from Montreal next week, so he's going to be happy to see that. Let's see. Um, let's just take surprise. Surprise. So what, so what I'm seeing, we're seeing buyer demand drop because a lot of buyers right now are just like, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> and in fact, I saw it on the news the other day, 
they're saying rents are insane. They have bidding wars for rents, uh, for rents, for rentals. Uh, the landlord saying, how much are you willing to spend per month and how long will you stay? And then the top bidder wins. That's just crazy. So renting is getting pretty tough. Let's look at one more. How about, let's look at Maricopa. Maricopa, it's still very desirable, but look at this 116% of buyer demand and their market index number is 381. In our book, 381 is kind of cool. So it's not as crazy there. All right, I'm just going to pick one more and then I'm done. Let's do Tempe. 91%, it's 305. Good time to buy in Tempe. 305 is probably one of the coolest ones. All right, guys, it is Cheryl Willis over at Go Arizona Real Estate. If you are moving here from another part of the country or the world, I specialize in relocation and we got you from A to Z and we will get you in the home of your dreams. If you're thinking about selling in the greater Phoenix area, I have a team of agents that we are ready to get your listing on the market, get you top dollar like that. Oh. Did I mention we only charge 3% to sell your home? All right, guys, thanks so much. I appreciate all your following and your fans and your likes and your shares. And if you don't mind, please share this along to anyone you know that's thinking of buying or selling in the greater Phoenix area. Until next time, it's Cheryl Willis. Bye.